Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about one of the applications of eddy currents called electromagnetic braking. That's of course braking as in slowing things down, not braking as in smashing something to pieces. So eddy currents have a number of useful applications and one of these is, as you might have guessed, electromagnetic braking. Uh, one of the experiments that you can do in a school laboratory to demonstrate electromagnetic braking is swinging a metal pendulum in uh, between a magnetic field, as we can see a photograph of over here. So electromagnetic brakes use the opposing force created by eddy currents, because that's Lenz's law, remember, uh, eddy currents create opposing forces, and they use these forces to slow down fast-moving objects. Good use for the force. Now we can demonstrate electromagnetic braking pretty easily. All we need to do is drop a magnet through a copper tube, or a tube of any other conductive metal. Eddy currents uh, in the copper tube will slow down the magnet's descent, because they of course create magnetic fields that oppose the magnet's motion. And this means that the magnet will pass through, through the tube very slowly, far more slowly than if uh, there were no eddy currents. So what happens if we have a fast-moving wheel made of metal and we apply a magnetic field perpendicular to it, like we can see in this diagram over here? Well, we'll get eddy currents induced in the plane of the disk. The part of the disk that is entering the magnetic field will produce eddy currents to oppose the sudden appearance of flux, and the parts of the wheel leaving the field will also create eddy currents but these ones will try to regain the flux that they've lost. This means that on this side of the disk, current will flow in the direction shown to create flux, whereas on the other side of the disk, current will flow in the other direction to try and produce flux opposing this magnetic field. So the force on the wheel, due to the eddy currents, will oppose the wheel's rotation. We can see that if there's a current going through here, and a magnetic field in that direction, then the force will be backwards. And so all of the current flowing through the magnetic field will oppose the direction of the wheel. So if the spinning uh, metal disk is a wheel, the magnetic field will slow the wheel down. That is, it'll behave like a brake. If the magnetic field is produced by electromagnets, then we can change its strength very easily. All we need to do is change the amount of current that passes uh, through the uh, electromagnet. And this means that we can have very, very smooth braking indeed because we can control exactly how much the wheel is braking. We have a very, very precise control over it. The other advantage, of course, of using electromagnets is that we can produce an alternating uh, magnetic field, which will produce uh, more eddy currents due to the changing field than just a constant field. Now electromagnetic braking is sometimes used in trams and trains. So these are the examples you'll see most often. Electromagnets are placed in a train near the wheels and then switched on when it wants to brake. That means that we don't have a permanent magnetic field on the wheels slowing it down all the time. So the circular eddy currents induced in the wheel will slow the wheel down. Now, where does the kinetic energy go when it disappears? Well, it turns into the electrical energy of the eddy currents in the wheels. And because the wheels have resistance, it means that the eddy currents are turned into heat. So the total effect is that the train slows down while its wheels heat up. Same as if we simply put a friction brake on the wheel. Electromagnetic braking is also used in uh, amusement park rides, for example, roller coasters. We can see that this roller coaster is about to reach a set of magnetic brakes. So the magnets can be mounted on either the roller coaster itself or the rails. Usually roller coasters are very, very controllable. They're always going to stay on the rails, which means that we can mount the magnetic field on the rails themselves instead of on the roller coaster. So as the vehicle moves along the rails, uh, the eddy currents are induced and those will slow it down. Once again, its kinetic energy is transformed into electrical energy and then heat energy. 
So what happens if we're moving very, very slowly? So that the rate of change of magnetic field is very small. Well, the strength of a set of electromagnetic brakes will depend on the speed of the vehicle using them. Right? This means that if the vehicle is moving very fast, we'll get a very large rate of change of magnetic field and we'll get a lot of braking force, which is good because if something is moving very fast, then you want to slow it down a lot. And as it slows down, the eddy currents get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now this results in a very smooth brake, but what happens when we want to come to a complete stop? Well, the answer is we can't. The electromagnetic brakes cause very, very small eddy currents, which means that there is almost no braking force and the brakes can no longer slow it down. But it's not too much of a problem but because by this point it's moving very slowly anyway. So a different brake, usually a mechanical brake like a friction brake or just a rubber tyre, is used to bring the vehicle to a complete stop. So we cannot use electromagnetic brakes to stop completely. We can only use them to slow down. Now that's the end of the theory, so I'm going to go into some questions to let you test your knowledge. Que uh, question 6. Which option is true? Electromagnetic brakes cannot stop moving objects. Electromagnetic brakes are not practical. Permanent magnets are required to construct electromagnetic brakes. Or electromagnetic brakes are most effective when they are acting on slow moving objects. Let's go through these options, shall we? If we have a very slow moving object, then the magnetic field through it will change quite slowly. If we have a slow changing magnetic field, then we have only a small amount of force, and so the brakes are not very effective on the, snow, on the slow moving objects. If we look at option C, permanent magnets are required to construct electromagnetic brakes, there's no reason that we can't use electromagnets. All we need is a magnetic field, and electromagnets can produce that just as well as permanent magnets. Sometimes they can produce an even stronger field. How about B, electromagnetic brakes are not practical. This is not the correct answer either. They're used in roller coasters and trains and trams, so obviously they have some use. The last option then is A, electromagnetic brakes cannot stop moving objects. Now at first, brakes that cannot stop an object don't seem very useful. But what electromagnetic brakes are very good at is slowing objects down. They can produce a very large force on fast moving objects, but only a very small force on slow moving objects. So electromagnetic brakes cannot stop moving objects. Although, this doesn't mean that they're not practical. Question 7. When a magnet is dropped through a copper tube, it passes through the tube more slowly than if it is dropped through a plastic tube. Why is this? We've answered a similar question before. Is it because magnets are attracted to copper? Because objects fall more slowly through metal tubes? Because eddy currents in the magnet slow it down? Or none of the above? Well, let's go through the options. First of all, magnets are not attracted to copper. They're attracted to only a, number, a very small number of metals, including iron, nickel, and cobalt, as well as some metal alloys. Uh, one such metal alloy is what neodymium magnets are made out of. So it's not A. Option B says objects fall more slowly through metal tubes, and this is not correct either. If we drop a rubber ball or something through each tube, there'll be no change. The only objects that fall through more slowly are ones that are generating a magnetic field, right? So then we come to option C. Eddy currents in the magnet slow it down. This is not the correct answer. Eddy currents are induced in the copper, not the magnet. The current through the magnet doesn't matter. What matters is the current through the copper tube, right? The moving magnet produces a current in the copper tube, and that eddy current is what opposes the magnet's motion, not a current in the magnet itself. So the correct answer is going to have to be none of the above. 
Make sense? Question 8. Moving objects have kinetic energy. Explain how electromagnetic brakes remove this energy. Now remember, due to conservation of energy, we can't just destroy the energy. We have to convert it into a different form, right? So we have kinetic energy, we have eddy currents, and eddy currents are a way of turning kinetic energy into electrical energy, right? And that's how we remove the energy of the large object. So according to Lenz's law, the eddy currents induced by the wheel's motion produce a force that opposes their motion. And so we turn the kinetic energy into electrical energy. This electrical energy quickly dissipates as heat, of course, because all metals have resistance. Question 9. Explain why brakes that use eddy currents cannot bring a vehicle to a complete stop. So how do we go about answering this one? We know that the strength of the force produced by eddy currents is going to be proportional to the rate of change of magnetic field. And the rate of change of magnetic field depends on how quickly the vehicle is moving or how fast the wheels are turning. So the strength of the eddy currents depends on the speed of the vehicle. More braking force is produced for faster vehicles. And in fact, if we move down to very, very slow speeds, there will be almost no braking force, which means electromagnetic brakes cannot stop it from moving completely. Question 10. A metal wheel is spinning clockwise. A magnetic field pointing towards you is placed across the left uh, of half of the wheel only. In which directions do eddy currents flow, if any? All right, let's figure this out. Let's just look at a spoke of the wheel, if I can call it that, that's about to come out of this magnetic field. All right? When it comes out of the magnetic field, uh, there's going to be less flux. So it wants to produce more flux to make up for it. It'll create flux pointing towards you, just like the field it's leaving. So the current will flow in this direction, right? So we get a current that looks something like this. We can also see that the part of the wheel inside the magnetic field uh, will oppose its motion. Using the right-hand palm rule, we have the current going downwards, magnetic field going towards you, and the direction of the force moving the opposite direction that the wheel is rotating. So the eddy current resists both the movement of the wheel and the change of flux. So at the top of the wheel, this a section of wheel leaving the field produces anti-clockwise eddy currents. Right? What about the bottom of the wheel? Here we've got another spoke moving to the magnetic field that's going to, to oppose the motion of the wheel. So the force will go this way, uh, the magnetic field goes that way, and we end up with the current going up as it enters the field. So it must go around like this, outside the field. Once again, we can see that this is opposing the change of flux through it. It doesn't want flux coming that way, so it makes flux going that way by producing a clockwise eddy current. That's straightforward enough, isn't it? So as the bottom of the wheel, uh, as the bottom of the wheel enters the magnetic field, it opposes this change in magnetic field by producing clockwise eddy currents. So that means that even though it's the same wheel and the same magnetic field, the eddy currents produced on each part of the wheel are in different directions. So that's the end of the questions. This is the end of the section on electromagnetic brakes, which are a way of turning kinetic energy into electrical energy and then heat energy in order to slow down a moving object. In the next section, We'll be looking at induction cooktops, another use of eddy currents. Mm -hmm.